Bodhayana, the Indian Pythagoras, and the Mathematics of Altar Building Around the 7th century BC, an Indian mathematician named Bodhayana explored the mathematics of altar building. Calculating the areas of various altars, he became the first to explicitly state the Pythagorean theorem. And this a century or more before Pythagoras found a proof for this famous theorem. And on top of this, Bodhayana also found a pretty good approximation of the square root of 2. Hey, good to see you. This is Stefan, author of In Search of the Sublime. On this World History Channel, we'll trace humanity's relentless pursuit of scientific truth, moral excellence and enlightenment. We'll meet anyone from Mesopotamian astronomers and Indian yogis to Greek philosophers and enlightenment scientists. And you'll meet them firsthand using primary sources, giving you valuable insights that transcend the surface level understanding you get on other channels. Go check it out for yourself. Let's start. Mathematics existed since the early days of India. At the time, it was mostly used for the calendar, which included some simple astronomical calculations, and it was also used for economic means. Mathematics became more advanced around 800 BC. Around this time, India urbanized and formed hundreds of small kingdoms. As the economy grew, people gained some free time to study the world. As a result, it is also around this time that many schools of philosophy and meditation bloom into being. Fire altars, which had been central to the ancient Vedic religion, also became more sophisticated. In the past, they were made of mud, but now they were made of baked bricks. And the geometric shapes of these altars, which included the square, the rectangle, a circle, a half circle, and also a trapezoid, became mathematically defined. And this is where our man Bodhiyana comes in. Bodhiyana wrote the earliest known Sulba Sutra, which roughly translates as instruction on the measuring cord. Sutra is instruction, and Sulba is the measuring cord used to construct geometric figures. And based on the study of the vocabulary and the grammar of the text, linguists have dated it to around the 7th century BC. Unfortunately, I have to add, studying Indian texts from this era is usually a bit of a puzzle. Because for easy memorization, the texts are usually extremely condensed or even written as a poem. And as you can imagine, this didn't make those texts particularly clear. The content likely had to be taught from master to student. And these texts were then used to memorize the key lessons. These early Indian texts also never give proofs or argumentation. They just state the results. And this means that we often can only guess how these results were obtained. This is in stark contrast to the Greeks, who made great efforts to systematically prove all their claims. And now let's dive into the text itself. While figuring out how to build altars of different size and shapes, Bodhayana stumbled on the Pythagorean theorem. As it turns out, the Pythagorean rule had been in use both in Egypt and Mesopotamia since at least 1800 BC. But Bodhayana is the first to explicitly formulate the general theory in words. Although, as I stated before, he did not give a proof of the theory. That had to wait until Pythagoras. Now before we continue, let's review the Pythagorean theorem. In high school we all learned that a squared plus b squared is c squared. Now what does this mean? If we have a right angle triangle, as we can see here, and we name a and b the legs of the triangle and c the hypotenuse, then these sides are related via that equation a squared plus b squared is c squared. A very insightful way to visualize the meaning of this formula is with the diagram on the right. As you hopefully know, if you take the side of a square and you square it, then you get the entire area of that square. So if we draw a square next to the side A of the triangle, its area becomes A squared. If we draw a square at side B, its area becomes B squared. And if we draw a square at side C, at the hypotenuse, it becomes C squared. And what the Pythagorean theorem tells us is that the area of a squared and b squared must be equal to the area of c squared. 
To give you a better intuitive understanding of what this means, we look at the famous 345 triangle that you can see here. The bottom of the triangle has size 3, so the area of the square underneath it is 3 squared is 9. The leg on the side has length 4, so the square attached to it is 4 squared is 16. And the hypotenuse has length 5, and the square of 5 is 25. And now let's check the theorem. a squared plus b squared is c squared, a squared is 9, b squared is 16, and together they are equal to c squared, which is 25. And that is the Pythagorean theorem. Bodhayana also used this version of the theorem. He stated, quote, The areas of the squares produced separately by the length and the breadth of the triangle together equal to the area of the square produced by the hypotenuse or the diagonal. And there you have it in a 7th century BC text, the Pythagorean theorem. Bodhiyana then used Pythagoras to construct altars of various sizes. For instance, he found a way to double the area of a square altar. He writes, the chord equal to the diagonal of a square makes twice the area, it is a doubler. Now let's see what he means by this. Let's take the blue square underneath the triangle. We draw another square of equal size on the right of the triangle. And then the square attached to the hypotenuse must be double the original square at the bottom. We can also prove this. a squared plus b squared is c squared. Since a squared and b squared are now equal, we can name them both a squared. So we get a squared plus a squared. And that is equal to 2a squared. Which means that indeed the red square has an area twice the blue square. Now once you know the rule, you can also simplify this drawing. There's actually no need to draw the blue squares. So let's remove them. And here we see both the original square and on the diagonal we see a square of twice the area. And this is the description that Bodhiyana gives us. Quite clever indeed. He then speaks of adding and subtracting square areas. For this he simply uses Pythagoras. Let's see how this works with the image on the right. If you want to add the blue square and the yellow square, we draw the Pythagorean diagram and we get the red square, which has an area equal to both of them. And the other way around, say we have the red altar, but we want to subtract the yellow altar, we get the blue altar underneath. Then he does something truly spectacular. If we have a triangle with two legs equal to one, then the diagonal becomes equal to the square root of two. Let's prove this with Pythagoras. a squared plus b squared is c squared. One squared plus one squared is equal to two, which means that c must be the square root of two. But what is the square root of two? Bodhiyana then sets out to find the corresponding value. And he finds a very impressive result. Now how he got to this result is not completely clear, but based on the answer, his reasoning might be as follows. Let's start with two squares of side one. We can see that in the image. The total area of the square must be two, since the height is now one and the width is now two and two times one is two. He then transforms this rectangle into a square with the same area, so also with area two. Well, why does he do this? Because a square with area 2 has sides equal to the square root of 2. And if he then can find out how big that side is, then he has a value for the square root of 2. Well, let's see in small steps how this works. First, he cuts up the right square, as you can see in the middle image, into three equal strips. And then the strip on the right, he cuts up again into three equal squares. He then rearranges two strips and one of the squares to form a bigger square, which we can see at the bottom. So now our rectangle has turned into a square, but we still have a problem. We still have those two extra bits left on the right. He solved this problem as follows. He cuts up those additional bits in four equal strips and he then pastes the strips on the side of the square, as you can see in the bottom image. As you can see, we now have something very close to a square, although a tiny square at the top right is missing. 
but this is already so close that the sides of this square must already be very close to the square root of 2. Let's see what the side actually is. The big square had length 1. The small strip next to it was a third of the original square, so it is a third. And the even smaller strip next to it was a quarter of the third of the original square. So the square root of 2 must be equal to 1 plus a third plus a third times a quarter. And this is indeed a very close approximation. But Bodhayana doesn't stop there. He then scrapes a bit of the sides of the square in order to then fill that missing square in the top right. As it turns out, you have to take a 34th of that fourth of that third of the side in order to fill up that little square on the top. And that is the expression that you see here. His expression was 1 plus a third plus a third times a quarter minus a third times a quarter times 1 34th. Quite accurate. And this gives a value of the square root of 2 of 1.41422, while the actual value of the square root of 2 is 1.41421. So it is correct up to four decimal places. Very impressive indeed. Now let's go through the actual text. This is all we have about this whole derivation. He writes, one should increase the measure by a third and then by a fourth and then decrease it by 34th. And that is the diagonal, that square root of 2. Interestingly, in a later version, from a few centuries later, it is even recognized that this very accurate value is only an approximation and not the true exact value of the square root of 2. Bodhayana then gives us a way to triple the area of a square altar. Let's see how he does this. Let's start with the square at the bottom, the blue square, and let's give it sides 1. Then the diagonal of that square, we've already seen, must be equal to the square root of 2. If we then make the second square on the right equal to that diagonal, so equal to the square root of 2, then the resulting yellow square must be equal to 3 times the original blue square. Let's now prove that this is the case. Again, a squared plus b squared is c squared. a is equal to 1. 1 squared is 1 b is equal to the square root of 2. The square of the square root of 2 is just 2. So then c squared becomes 1 plus 2 is 3. So indeed, the yellow square has 3 times the area as the original blue square. That is Bodhayana's tripler. He then discusses how to change a rectangle into a square and the other way around. He starts out with a rectangle and then he draws out a square on one of its sides. We can see that in the middle image. And then the remaining part of the rectangle, he cuts into two equal strips. Then he picks one of those strips and he attaches it to the bottom of the figure. We can see that in the middle here. And now we have something close to the shape of a square. The only thing that is missing is that little square on the bottom left. But this can be easily solved with a trick we've already seen. We can use Pythagoras to subtract a square. The square on the left is that original diagram that we have. We want to subtract that little square, which I added to the bottom of the triangle. And then the blue square is the square we are looking for. It is exactly equal in area to the original rectangle. And that is how to change a rectangle into a square of equal area. Now, perhaps you might think, isn't it easier to just calculate the area of the rectangle as we do in high school, just length times width? And then we just take the square root of the result to find the side of the square. Yeah, that would be easy, but only if you have a calculator. The interesting thing about Bodhayana's method is that it can be applied completely without calculations. You, you just draw out the figures and you get an exact result. Very interesting indeed. Finally, Bodhayana also wants to, quote, make a square into a circle. He wants to make a circle with the same area as an original square. Now, how does he do this? Well, in the image on the right, we see that square. And on the inside, we see one line, vertical line, which is equal to half the side of the square. And we see a line equal to half of the diagonal. What we now do is we take those two lines and we make them the radii of two circles. You see that in the image at the bottom. 
As you can see, one circle, the smaller one, now has an area smaller than the original square, and the bigger circle has an area clearly bigger than the original square. So the true square must be somewhere in between. Based on trial and error, Bodiana then guessed that the correct circle must be a third of the way between those two circles, as you can see in the image below. And that circle is roughly equal to the original square. To get an idea of how accurate this is, if we go through a modern calculation, we find a value of pi of 3.09 instead of the actual 3.14. So this method is not incredibly accurate, but it is a decent rough approximation. And these were the highlights of Bodiana's great work on altar building. I hope you enjoyed it a lot. And if you want to know more about Indian mathematics or many other topics from world history, read my book In Search of the Sublime. You can read it completely for free on worldhistorybook.com. Worldhistorybook.com. See you there. Bye-bye.